How this is going to work is incredibly simple. For those of you long time ones who have been here for a while, for those who haven't, I'll give a brief rundown of how the No Restrictions series works. It's pretty simple, really. No Restrictions. Legendaries are on the table, Pokemon Home is on the table, and any Pokemon from Legends Arceus or Sword and Shield is also on the table. If it can't be transferred over and used in a playthrough, while also being relatively reasonable to get, it's gonna be on there. The keyword here is reasonable. There are certain Pokemon that take too much time to get to be thrown onto the team, like the Genies in Legends Arceus, Eternatus in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and the Ruined Quartet, who are all going to take a decent bit to get, and are too overleveled for the playthrough anyways. I still don't know why Paldea lets you legally catch those anyways. So let's get started with our starter, and we can kick off our adventure through Scarlet and Violet from there. Look, picking up Sprigatito is just the smartest move, you know how it goes. I've mentioned that it's the speedrunner Pokemon for a reason. It matches up so well against a lot of the game. The Titans, Cloth, Great Tusk, and Iron Treads. And it even has Low Kick for Orthworm last I checked. Bombardier is going to give it some trouble. But that's why you have other teammates. And the teammates I have proposed should more than make up for the type difference. It also does well versus certain gym leaders. Like Iono, Kofu, Rhyme, and Tulip. Its moves are going to wind up being U-Turn, Flower Trick, Night Slash, Grass Snot, and Low Kick. If you're willing to cheat and waste the time, go ahead and give yourself a protein version of your Spurgatito. You've earned it. But, apparently, you can link Scarlet and Violet to Pokemon Home, and you can get a hidden ability Gen 9 starter via the mobile version of Home. I'm pretty sure you can get this with the free version, but if not, recycle cans, or just simply trade it. I don't know. Same thing as Meowscarada, cheat Libero on it if you want. With or without it, Cinderace is a Pokemon that is incredibly easy to get, assuming you already have Sword and Shield. You literally can just pick it up at the start of the game, and then go grab the next entry on the list, and a means of which I will specify when the time comes, and then transfer them to home so you can transfer them to Scarlet and Violet. Cinderace is incredibly fast, and covers the bad matchups that the Grass Cat has for the most part. Stuff like Gym 1 and 2, which are Bug and Grass, get absolutely mowed over by Score Bunny slash Reboot. And with its stats, it matches up pretty solidly well against a decent bit of the game. It also helps with Orthworm, which can give your cat some trouble. It also practically sweeps Poppy by itself. Its best moves by the end of things are going to be U-Turn, Pyro Ball, High Jump Kick, U-Turn, and probably Will-O-Wisp, Iron Head, or some other attacking move. If you cannot get your hands on Cinderace, Skeledurge is a good substitute. And whatever Cinderace can't beat, well, Urshifu Rapid Strike sure can. Yeah, it's a given that this Mon is gonna be here. As thanks to the existence of the Sword and Shield DLC, you can quite literally just get Urshifu solely after you pick up Scorbunny and just speed run the Tower of Waters and then evolve your Cub through through these means. This is basically gonna let you play a Fire Water Grass Core that synergizes with your two starters. Being able to use Surging Strikes to crit through anything that moves with extreme prejudice is absolutely worth the pickup. It shows, let's say, Mela, who's boss. That's for sure. It can basically break through her entire team, regardless of Torkoal's son. And it serves as extra insurance against some of the other tougher fights in the game where your win condition is raw power. Giacomo, Larry, Grusha, Nimona, Gita, and the Professors come to mind most certainly. While it's not as fast as Cinderace and Miascarada, the additional bulk makes up for it. Its best moves are Surging Strikes, Close Combat, U-Turn, and Ice Spinner probably. And yes, this is three U-Turners, because it allows you to pivot between the three without ever having to actually waste a turn switching, or switching because the game told you to. Speaking of which, I hate that we can't turn that off. I want to play Set. If you can't get Urshifu, Quaquavel is a good substitute. Iron Treads is practically an easy pickup. It's the third Titan you'd face in your journey through Paldea, assuming you went ahead and did them in order. This Pokemon basically offers you a Steel and Ground type, which is a nice way to resist Dragon, which you're gonna need in case something happens to the mandatory Fairy that is showing up later on the list. Iron Treads can be caught at level 45 right after you jump it with Arvin, because this stupid robotic elephant decided to stand in the way of you and a dog's health. And personally, that means he doesn't deserve mercy. 
Not only does it offer a dragon resist, but it also offers ground stab, which let me tell you, ground stab is pretty nuts. Iron Tread specifically also helps you with some of the team star bosses. Atticus and Ortega stand precisely zero chance. It's also a nice backup in case Grusha somehow gets the jump on your Urshifu. If you're playing Pokemon Scarlet, try Excadrill. If you can't get your hands on Excadrill, well, you're playing Scarlet. Use Great Tusk and win anyways. Gengar is really nice because of its speed and special attacking stat, and the fact that it gets coverage at the wazoo. The real downside is that most of its coverage is going to be locked by TMs. So, if you don't want that, Miss Magius should do just a little better, since you can make it remember Magical Leaf, Power Gem, and Mystical Fire as coverage. Now, if you're willing to commit to getting Gengar's good moves, like Sludge Bomb, Thunderbolt, and Energy Ball, it's absolutely better than Miss Magius thanks to having more speed and power behind it. It's also just good to have a special attacker, because the four Pokemon I've mentioned earlier are all physical. Now, where does this Pokemon come in to help? It helps as a contingency against Rhyme and Tulip, and thanks to its ghost typing and access to the TM's psychic and dazzling gleam, it becomes very, very good against Ares fighting types. Just don't get too cocky, or Annihilate is gonna tear you a new one. Thunderbolt is great against Larry's Elite Four team, and Energy Ball and Dazzling Gleam function as contingencies in case Rika and Hassel take out your main answers. Rabambi is basically mandatory, as is having a fairy type essentially. Not to mention, this one can be caught at the start of the Teal Mask DLC. Like Gengar, it's fast and strong, and thanks to being an outright dragon immunity that outspeeds Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant, who it destroys with Moonblast rather effortlessly, it's going to carry you through Area Zero pretty quick. It also effortlessly wipes out Hassel, especially after a Quiver Dance, and serves as backup versus Giacomo and Airy. Arguably, it's better against Airy than Gengar is. Although, that argument goes out the window when Toxicroak starts threatening Poison Stab. It's your best answer the dragons, and it basically wraps the team up in a nice little bow, and covers some rather niche matchups that the rest of the team may not have completely on lock. Its best moves will be Quiver Dance, Moonblast, Pollen Puff, and a choice of U-Turn for pivoting, Terra Blast for extra coverage if you're willing to grind out the crystals, Stun Spore if you really need it, or Sticky Web if for some reason you don't think your hyper-offensive team is fast enough and you want to be more cautious than that hero from a show I tried and failed to watch. It's about a hero who is OP and overly cautious. Where is this going? It's going to the part where I don't recommend this show, and ask you all for recommendations on better shows to watch. I got two episodes into this one and was bored out of my mind. Go watch better shows. Oh, I forgot this is about Pokemon, huh? Um. And yeah, uh, Rabambi, yeah, it, it wraps this team up. If you need a substitute, you don't got the DLC, Sylveon, Florigus, or Azumarill. So, if you're wondering where the bulk is for this team, I've decided that you don't need bulk. This is a playthrough, and I'm gonna go with the idea that the best way to get through this Pokemon game is a team of well-rounded hitters. Especially now that the battle animations can't be turned off. And so moves like Toxic and Recover feel not only inconvenient to press, but unnecessary. The opponent isn't doing enough damage to warrant Don Dozo or Toxapex. And you're basically gonna one-shot most stuff with Urshifu, Cinder Ace, and Meowskarata regardless. Now, with that said, I'm gonna go watch a show that I'm sure is gonna be good. Probably. Maybe. I hear Nichijou is good.